Good morning, everyone. This is Kristen from Accra. So we'll be talking today about effective search strategies for researchers. This is part of a series of webinars we've been doing on Agora and Research for Life. So we'll have a general introduction, and then we'll be uh, looking at some specific examples. So I know that some of you already use Agora and Research for Life and Tenari, and other of you may have other resources that you use. So we're really happy to have your contributions. So please put that in the chat in case other people following the webinar could benefit from that. So Agora and Research for Life and Summon. Some of you may know about Research for Life and the four programs, Sonari, Agora, Oada, and Ardi. These are part of a private-public partnership. They cover um, health, agriculture, fisheries, nutrition, environment, innovation, and intellectual property. And this is the partnership of WHO, FAO, WIPO UNEP, Cornell and Yale Universities, and major publishing partners. And together, this is a partnership that focuses on reducing the scientific knowledge gap. It's about making the most recent scientific knowledge available to colleagues in, um, in many of these topics. And we have exciting new development. We have a new program coming called GOLI, which will be focusing on law. So that's a quite exciting development. So through this, the, uh, the publishers are providing journals and ebooks. So here you can see a map. It's the same eligibility map for all the four Research for Life programs, soon five. So Karna and I work in the Agora program, Access to Global Online Research and Information and Agriculture, where you can get electronic journals, ebooks. We have over 3,000 institutions registered. And it's not just agriculture, it's also fisheries, food, nutrition, veterinary science, there's some economics, there's some social science, and it's all about ensuring access to countries. So you can see the blue countries on the map, these have free access. And Group B countries have low cost access, that's $1,500 per year, which goes back to capacity development activities in uh, Research for Life. And uh, who is eligible? I can see that some people in the, in the audience are actually eligible and using this. So eligible institutions include the national public institutions. So that could be government offices, universities, research institutions, NGOs, teaching hospitals. So um, and we encourage if you're not if you're not registered, it's definitely worth checking with your institutional library to see if you are registered. So we're happy to see the use increase. So what is Agora? It's a portal. It's it's like your library. You can go in and search on a topic. You can search for a journal. You can dig deeper and find also links to databases and other things that might be useful. There are a couple different search options that you have. There's someone in Scopus. So we generally say that if you don't know what you're going to start with, try, try uh, Scopus. Uh, sorry, Summon. It's a search engine. And it's mobile friendly. I've often used that on my cell phone in meetings. So if you are, this is the Agora portal. So on the lower left hand side, you can see there's an option to search the full text using Summon and Scopus. That would take you to a search interface. But I generally say use, use Summon because Scopus has some country limitations, but Summon works for, uh, for all countries. And uh, going forward, so here's an example. We've clicked on the link, we're on the Summon page, and I can search on that. And we just did a sub webinar on Summon, so you can go back on the AIMS page and find more information on detailed Summon searching. So, but today we're talking more about search strategies. So, um, what is information literacy? We quite like this definition. It's about knowing 
when and why you need information, where to find it, and how to evaluate, use, and communicate it in an ethical manner. The problem is not finding information. You know, as we know, there is a, an avalanche of information online. There's journals and texts and there's gray literature. There's databases, there's open data, there's you know, scientific research journals. There's so much, but how do we know what to choose? where to look for it, and what is appropriate to use. So this is why we're doing the short overview today to talk a little bit about, about this. So this is a very text-heavy slide, but it talks about just a search strategy. So before you go to that search interface and type in keywords, think about what you are um, looking for. Think about what problem are you trying to solve? Is it very broad? Is it very narrow? Do I need a thesis? Do I need a database? Am I looking for scientific journal articles? What are the key concepts that I'm looking for? Are there synonyms or different spellings for it? What kind of source should I be looking for? That, that comes up every so often. People will say, how do I know if I'm finding the right information? And that's a really, it's a great question and it's a very difficult one to answer. The question is, you know, is it answering the question that you wanted answered? Can I trust it? We know we're living in an era of false news and uh, it's about also being critical about the information you're finding. It doesn't have citations. Is it from a credible source? That's really important. So you may, you'll probably need to ask the question, search, look at what you find, come back and search again. So here's an example, just in text. So here I'm looking at water management issues and rice production. So here again, I would say, what's associated with that? In this case, I'm actually looking for scholarly primary research. So I would say my main concepts might be water management, rice production, but they're synonyms. And, uh, if you use too restrictive words, you may be excluding things that might be very useful for your search. So look at other synonyms, broader term synonyms. In this case, we don't really have alternative spellings, but there might be plural form. So just, just think about, because how you search and the words you put in really determine what you find. You may find far too much or not enough. So um, many of you will probably know about Boolean operators. These are words you can put to your search to expand, limit, and focus your search. So, uh, and is a classic one, livestock and drought. So if I search for livestock and drought, the middle bit where the two circles overlap, that will give me things that apply to both. I could say or. I want beans or legumes. That means that I will find results that have beans or that have legumes. Not. I want pig, but not guinea pig. So these are just ways to help focus your search. And yes, that may not work in Google Scholar, so be careful about this. Try with it and try it without it. So here is a uh, lovely graph. So this is where I'm looking at, again, water management issues and rice production. So I look at various concepts. Are there synonyms? Are there other words I should use to combine? And then I combine it and I see what I get. So uh, again, it's about evaluating it and being careful and researching it and coming back again. So there's other things you might want to be aware of that are things about um, search engine functions. And many of the search engines work differently. So you can use things like wildcards if you don't quite know how something is spelt. You know, river star for river or rivers, pesticide star for pesticide or pesticides. You might have English or American spelling. So if you're not sure, just play around with it a little bit. And in that context, it depends again what where you're searching because very often they will have a little help section telling you 
tips about this kind of thing. There may also be issues about restricting by year or by topic or by source or by type. So uh, have a look at the help text because that can be very useful in learning how a, a an interface best works. And on the note of search interfaces, some of them also allow you to save your search. And I know that bandwidth costs and access are, are an issue for many of us. So remember that for many of these, you can actually, for example, in Summon, you can save your search and export that to yourself, download the search results or have it emailed to yourself, which means I can go and look at that calmly offline, look at the results, decide which ones I really want to focus on and then come back again online and search. So it's useful to know when internet access is both slow and expensive, as it is for many of us. We also want to highlight some other resources. Of course, we think that Research for Life is fantastic, but there are other many other amazing, useful resources. And uh, you may know about the Open Access Scholarly Resources. There is the, open access, the directory of Open Access Journals. Open Access Scholarly Resources, and Open Access Books. And all of these may be very useful to you in your work and your research. And if you're browsing Agora or the Research for Life programs, you, may see, you will see a number of Open Access journals. And we actually require that if we're including a journal that's Open Access, that it's included in the directory Open Access. So there's a partnership and a uh, collaboration there as well. So many of you also, I'm sure, use Google and Google Scholar to search. And they're both great resources, but they're a little bit different. So if you're searching in Google, there is a difference as well. So if you're searching in Google, you're searching everything. That may not be scholarly, but you can also get news and images, which can be very useful if you're looking for keywords or recent developments on a topic. Maybe you're looking for something on fall armyworm. The news can be, can be very useful. And disturbing. However, if I'm looking for more research focused material, I would use Google Scholar. And that because that then provides me with links to scholarly literature on the internet. Peer reviewed articles, preprints, postprints, textbooks, etc. And if you uh, have time afterwards, try the difference of searching for a term first in Google and Google Scholar, and you will see the difference. And a nice uh, aspect is that if you, you can actually you add Agora as one of your preferred libraries in Google Scholar, which means that if you're searching and there's a resource that you're looking for that's available through um, Google Scholar, it will, it will tell you that you can find it, for example, in your university library, if you've added that, or in Agora. So here I've done a search of Google Scholar. And you can see I've got exam, I've got 1.7 million, which could be a little bit overwhelming. Then it's about uh, going in and saying, no, I want to restrict it to only newer ones. I want to search by date. I don't want to have patents. So you can really um, come in and target as much as you want and filter that down to what you really, what's really useful for you. Because that's the whole point here, that you can find the information you need for your work and for your research. A few other very useful resources in agricultural research is PubAg. That gives you access to research published by the U.S. Department of Agriculture. It's relatively new, only a couple years old, but um, I'm sure the numbers have increased since. This is another free resource. I can go and search by keywords. I can find articles, resources, and it's very up to date and it has full text journal articles available and a massive amount of citations. AGRIS is another extremely useful tool as hosted by FAO, and that has a very large multilingual collection of bibliographic resources. Again, bibliographies, books, papers, journals, and it's also a network of institutions. Here's an example. I've gone to the Agris page. It's hard to read this, but uh, you can go and search and then find resources, abstracts, and also 
possibly links to full text resources. Another quite new one is AgriKnowledge. That's a partner of the, electron the Essential Electronic Agriculture Library at Cornell University. It's funded by the Gates Foundation. And it also, AgriKnowledge has a new as a new collection, again, of online research and has a lot of potential, quite interesting information, books, articles, other areas. And again, look on the left. You can search and limit your search by keyword, commodity, location, or language, etc. Here's a few more. There's Cielo. That's a big one in Latin America, open access journals. PubMed. I know some of you use Hinari. PubMed is an, another useful health-related database with citations. And uh, I will mention also briefly the database of African theses and, and dissertations. Another one which we should have a slide for is, in general, is INASP and AuthorAid. If you look at inasp.info, they have some really useful information on uh, there's both there's training materials. I know some of you are asking about training materials and PDFs and materials. So go look at the NS and AuthorAid website because they have modules both on information literacy strategy and they have a specialized course just on search skills for researchers that you can download and use for yourself and use to help your colleagues. You can be an expert on this. So that wraps up our presentation for now. We have lots of time for